So far we've talked about exponential growth and exponential decay and, and relative di to different equilibria. But the fact is, a lot of things in the real world don't just grow or decay, they oscillate. They go up and down and up and down and up and down. So in this video, we're going to talk about how that works. Now, there's an old ditty that I learned as a kid. The more you study, the more you know. The more you know, the more you forget. The more you forget, the less you know. The less you know, the less you forget. The less you forget, the more you know. So why study? And, you know, this is kind of silly, but it gets to the heart of how all oscillations work. You have one thing, like let's say knowledge, that causes something else to grow, like forgetfulness. But that second thing causes the first thing to shrink. The more you know, the more you forget, the more you forget, the less you know. But once x shrinks, y, grow, y shrinks. And once y shrinks, x grows. And once x grows, y grows. And once y grows, x shrinks. And things go around and around and around and around. So in terms of differential equations, whenever you have one, two quantities, x and y, where y prime is a positive multiple of x, but x prime is a negative multiple of y, that is, x causes y to grow, but y causes x to shrink. Whenever that happens, you're going to see oscillations. So a few examples in the real world. One is the business cycle. So if you have excess demand for a product, that's going to push the price up. If the price goes up, people are going to say, I can make money by making this product. And that's going to increase production. But once you have lots of production, people are going to be able to buy all of the stuff they want. They're going to fill their houses with it, and they're not going to be interested in buying anymore. So demand is going to drop. The bigger production is, the less demand there is because the demand has all been fulfilled. So people produce more. The demand is filled. Demand drops. Production drops. Then there's a shortage. Demand goes up. Production goes up. There's a, there's a glut. Demand goes down. Production goes down. And you go around and around and around and around predators and prey. If you've got too many rabbits, then there's lots of stuff for foxes to eat. So the fox population goes up. But once there are lots of foxes, then the rabbits all get eaten, and the rabbit population goes down. And then the foxes go hungry, and the fox population drops. And then there are more rabbits, and then there are more foxes, and then there are fewer rabbits, and then there are fewer foxes. And finally, a rotating wheel. And rotating wheel, x and y, are just our usual x and y coordinates. So we're going to study the rotating wheel, and then we're going to go back and see what that says about business and rabbits and foxes. So suppose we have a wheel that's rotating counterclockwise. Then the points to the right of the center are going up. The points to the left of the center are going down. And the farther you are to the right, the faster you're going up. This point is going up very quickly. This point is only going up very slowly. This is going down slowly. This is going down quickly. So the upshot is that dy dt, how fast you're going up or down, is a constant times x. And the, this constant is the Greek letter omega. It's not a w. It's an omega. Okay. And then we can keep track of how things are going right and left. Well, if it's going counterclockwise, the top of the wheel is going to the left, the bottom of the wheel is going to the right. And the higher you are, the more you're going to the left, the lower you are, the more you're going to the right. So in this case, dx dt is minus omega times y, and it turns out to be the same constant omega for the rotating wheel. So for a rotating wheel, our equations are dx dt is minus omega y, and dy dt is omega x. Now, here's one solution to that. One solution is if x is cosine of omega t, and y is sine of omega t. Let's check that. The derivative of x, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so we get minus sine of omega t, and then we get a factor of omega from the chain rule. 
So minus omega sine of omega t. Oh, that's minus omega y. And y prime? Oh, the derivative of sine of omega t is omega cosine of omega t, which is omega x. So it works. x prime is minus omega y. y prime is omega x. And the geometry of it is as follows. At time 0, well, cosine of 0 is 1, and sine of 0 is 0. So at time 0, we're at 1, 0. And at time t, we're at cosine omega t and sine omega t, which is exactly what you'd expect if you rotated by an angle of omega t. We're on the unit circle. We went an angle of omega t around. So in fact, this describes going around in a circle at a rate omega, omega radians per second. Okay, here's another solution. Same equations, but now our solution is that x is minus sine of omega t and y is cosine. Again, we can just compute our derivatives. The derivative of minus sine is minus omega cosine. That's o minus omega y. The derivative of cosine is minus sine. That's omega x. Okay, and that is what you get if you start at the top of the wheel and rotate by an angle omega t. Another solution is to pick whatever constant you like. Let's call them a and b. And let x be a cosine minus b sine. And let y be a sine plus b cosine. And when I say sine and cosine, I mean sine of omega t and cosine of omega t. If you take a equals 1 and b equals 0, that was our first solution. If you take a equals 0 and b equals 1, that was our second solution. And once again, you can just take your derivatives. And what this describes is what happens if you start at a point a, b. And again, you rotate by angle omega t. And you wind up with this. And in fact, no matter where you start, you tell me where you start, and I'll tell you what a and b are. Because at time 0, x is a times the cosine of 0. So that's a times 1 minus b times the sine of 0. Sine of 0 is 0. So a times 1 minus b times 0, that's a. So at time 0, where x is a, and at time 0, y is a times 0 plus b times 1, that's b. So these numbers a and b are our initial values of x and y. So this is the most general solution. No matter what initial conditions you give me, our solution is going to take that form. OK. Let's do a graph of it. Here's a graph where I took a equals 3 and b equals 2. So x starts off at 3 and goes down and up and down and up. And y starts at 2, goes up and down and up and down. But you notice, first x drops. Then while x is negative, y drops. Then while y is negative, x goes back up. Then while x is positive, y goes back up. So they just x drops, then y drops, then x goes up, then y goes up, then x drops, then y drops, then x goes up, then y goes up. And it keeps on going over and over again. Now, is this the graph of the x and y coordinates of a point on, the, on a wheel? It could be. Is this a graph of demand and production in an industrial system? It could be relative to the equilibrium. You can't have negative production, but you can't have less production than normal. Is this the excess population of rabbits and, and foxes in the, in the forest? It could be. It could be any one of these things. The point is that the equations are the same for all three systems and are the same for any kind of system uh, that describes oscillations. Whenever you have this, this general situation, you're going to wind up with sines and cosines.